photography. I'm about to start this interview series. What I want to do is look at local artists, people that are street photographers, and kind of interview them and get a feeling for what you know what they shoot, why they like street photography, what is it that, that drives them to do street work. And I'm about to do a, uh, an interview right now with a good friend of mine, Tony Lay. Uh, and, and we're actually going to do something interesting. I'm actually going to give him my Hasselblad walk around with him and he's going to be photographing on the street while I film him and interview him and, and hopefully throughout the video as well we'll get a sample of some of his photos and really find out about how he shoots and why he shoots. Hey Tony. Okay Try. man so so listen uh, thanks for coming on to the show. You ruined my shot. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show man. No problem. I really appreciate that. I want to do more of this where I'm interviewing local photographers and I thought you'd be a perfect place to start because you've been shooting for a long long time and I just want to pick your brain a little bit. Let's maybe just tell everybody when, how you got started in photography. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, I got started really at a young age. I was you know, about 13 years old, and my father had this Fujika SLR film camera, and I just was so fascinated with photography. And I went on a trip to this grade seven trip to Quebec City. Um, and I had that camera with me shooting all over Quebec City and it was fun and it was great um, and I loved it. Um, in terms of going into like a professional realm, uh, I started really bought from uh, just kind of as a solution to a problem that I had. I used to be a creative director for a magazine and we were launching this magazine and we hired this photographer, or I hired this photographer on a whim, on a suggestion, and he didn't work out. And we had this a celebrity and, and everything like going at, you know, we had clothes being pulled from like, you know, like like Chanel and all this stuff, and the shots didn't turn out. So this was a fashion shoot. It was, was it? a fashion okay. shoot with a celebrity, and at the end of the day, I had to. We had an opportunity to reshoot everything with the celebrity, and uh, so and the celebrity wasn't too mad. We so, had time, and uh, yeah, and we pulled back all the clothes, right? We pulled back you know, beautiful gowns by Galliano and all this stuff, and I ended up saying, you know what? I'm just going to shoot it myself. Isn't that always the best way to learn? Eh? Just just dive in and kind of do it yourself. And if I'm not mistaken, fashion was like always your passion. Fashion photography you started off as. A fashion shooter, right? Yeah, no, and I definitely. Portraiture as well. Absolutely, fashion and portraits, um, and my love of fashion really was early on when I was, you know, watching. Uh, in Canada, we have, you know, fashion television with Jeannie Becker, and uh, and, we, and it was something that was just fascinating to me of uh, the creative freedom that photographers had and fashion designers had, you know, mm -hmm. of that era to be able to do anything that they wanted. Okay, well, let's get on to the topic that everyone's really interested in. Street photography, right? We love street photography. You love street photography. Love. You've done a lot of street photography, especially lately. You've really gotten into it, and I love your work. How did, when did you start street photography, and what was it about street photography that, that sort of captivated you and made you want to do it? Well, I really started, like, I really started street photography just as a kind of test. I would, uh, I, had a, I had a camera and, you know, I was like interested in kind of like just testing out my camera and the easiest thing, way to do, go about it was just to get on the street. Just get on the street and photograph whatever was out on the street. And a lot of my early work, uh, which, you know, not a lot of people have seen, is just of like garbage and trash and things I find in alleys and that kind of That's stuff, great. right? Um, but the interest really kind of came about when I was just kind of like taking pictures of buildings uh, with a long lens and this guy popped into my frame, this homeless guy popped into my frame and he wanted me to take his picture right? um, and I took his picture and... Do you still have that picture? I have that picture somewhere, <laughs> somewhere and uh, the interesting thing about it was that he looked like an older version of myself. Right? He was an Asian man, he was homeless, he was older he reminded me of myself, and, uh, oh, cool. and that's kind of where it starts. I started looking at things in with more care and attention of the reflection of yourself in your photos and of the time. 
Yeah. I know you were off on a really great trip to Jamaica recently. Tell me a little bit about those photographs I've seen. They were really cool. Yeah, the photographs were interesting because, you know, for the most part, um, uh, they were all captured out of a out of a car. All captured out of a moving car. Oh, why? Um, because we were going from, we were traveling, um, and it was just really uh, my girlfriend's uncle showing me around Jamaica because I've never been there before. And um, we were going around, and I would just stick my camera out of the window uh, and photograph. You know, looking around, there was not a lot of people with cameras, and I stuck out. And stuck out a lot. People started noticing the equipment that I had, right? So it was, it was, I was kind of on edge a little bit. Well, there's another example, right, of, of trying to be really stealth when you're shooting street photography. And I guess, you know, it really depends where you are, right? Like, so you found in Jamaica that it was tough to shoot uh, candid stuff. The people really did not it like could, that? It, is that, is that they, the they were just wondering what I was doing all, all the, you know what I mean? They, they were just questioning it. Um, yeah, I could see it in their kind of like gestures and that kind of stuff. Um, and just kind of like noticing other people around, no, like nobody had cameras. So wow. it's not necessarily something that's common there. So um, what were you shooting with? What lens combination, camera lens combination? I was shooting with the A7R2 with the 30, uh, 16 to 35. Okay. What makes for a good street photograph? You know what, I really look at, uh, I really look at light in terms of like high contrast, lots of graphic elements in it, whether it's a silhouette of a person or whether it's kind of like a silhouette of an object, things that create shapes. Um, and then the second, the, the, the second most important thing is action and insight. Um, cool. you know, like, like Bruce Gilden, how he gets kind of like every, he gets involved with this, you know, with the subject and creates a reaction. In my opinion, one of the really, really important things uh, is, is, you know, especially for inspiration is to, is to study, you know, the work of some of the people that came before us, masters of the craft. And when we think about street photography, who are the people that really kind of inspired you um, you know, with regards to street photography? Uh, people that really inspire me from street photography is a uh, Bruce Gilden. You know, Bruce Gilden does some really interesting work. Um, and, uh, you know, like... There's uh, those striking portraits. Striking flash. portraits, yeah, you know what? Yeah. But it also kind of like the, the beauty of the oddity of the world. Right? It has nothing to do with kind of like creating these beautiful pictures of beautiful people and like what the media decides is, you know, who beautiful people are. Um, and he's out there kind of like photographing kind of these people that never, almost never get asked to be photographed because they're maybe, they may be seen in a light of kind of like, uh, you know, they're not beautiful or whatever, right? So it's important to kind of, you know, take note of all those things. Mizell, you know? Jay Mizell. Jay Mizell. He's done a great work, and it's such a different thing with him. Uh, the one thing that I really appreciate and I really admire about him is his explanation of street photography, how it is a dance. You know, he feels the energy in the, in the scene, and it's like a dance. And you're moving around this, the, this almost you know, universally choreographed kind of uh, environment where you can, as a street star, you can find if you're kind of like connected with the people around you, you can find your way around that. You can almost foresee what's happening, what's going to happen. In the world, so. Okay, man. Well, thanks, Tony. Thanks for this interview. Oh, it uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Uh, this is Tony Lay again. and. Uh, please check him out guys, check him out on Instagram, he posts a lot of photos on a regular basis, especially recently he's been posting a lot of street work which I really like and and he's also got a YouTube channel that's starting to pick up so guys uh, leave all the descriptions down below to go check out his work and uh, as always really appreciate you uh, you know coming out and uh, checking out the channel and listening to this. I uh, hope to do many more of these, so please leave your comments. Let me know if you like this. If you like this interview, if you want to see more, I'm definitely, you know, I'm excited about doing more interviews with other local, local artists slash photographers, especially street photographers. So let me know what you think. And as always, if uh, you like this video, 
hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And guys, we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. One eighth of a second. <laughs>